You know what? You know what? We are done. All right, all right, yeah. All right, that's it? That is it. You're just going to drop me like that? Oh, yeah, I can drop you. You're uncomfortable. You don't have enough storage space. And when's the last time I didn't have to work my ass off to get those zippers open? Oh, so that's what this is all about? The zippers? Well, hey, I told you I had a headache that day. <laughs> this is, no, 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 this is not one day. We knew this day was coming for years. Oh, well, don't think this is some surprise to me. You don't think I noticed for miles and miles you're walking behind other hikers looking at their backpacks? Oh, yeah, I noticed. You think you're just going to get yourself out there, find some new backpack overnight? <laughs> well, you, you don't think I could find another backpack? I, maybe I have been looking around on Backpack Grinder or the, I, and uh, Backpack Tinder a little bit. You know, maybe uh, maybe there's uh, something that's caught my eye. Maybe you just go and check that backpack out then. Yeah, great, fine. Fine. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> yeah, fine. See ya. <laughs> and just like that, he, he walks out of my life. YouTube, this is Practice Prepper, and this is my EDC pack. I've had this for a number of years, and I've held on to it because it's worked. But there are a lot of things about this pack that I really dislike. A lot of things I think are very poorly designed about it. One of them is the, this top panel always folds down over this other zipper panel, so every time you try to unzip this, it always jams up there, so you have to kind of hold this up with one hand and zip that open a little bit at a time. You gotta do that. I just I mean, it's not a huge burden, but, you know, did they ever try it when they were testing these things out? This zipper down here, the teeth were so weak that they just ripped through, and I had to stitch it through so the zippers wouldn't go off the track. On the sides, it uses this kind of uh, rippable material, really uh, weak material on the sides, which are always the things that get, you know, rubbed against rocks or whatever when you're hiking. Uh, you'd think that that would want to be extra strong material. The straps up at the top are always slipping, so yeah, I get it adjusted for my, my shoulders and everything, and then these all slip. I've been thinking about maybe stitching and sewing those together so they can just lock in and, and keep the proper curve in here going on. And it has the common issue where, for some reason, backpack companies seem to think that your lumbar is at exactly the same height as your hips. Which, I maybe there's someone that has some sort of a bone disorder whether your body is built that way, but I don't know anybody that has their the lumbar curve of their back lined up with their hips. But I have a number of issues with this pack. It served me all right though, and it holds everything, so I've, I've kept it for a number of years, but I've always been on the lookout for a new one. And I thought that I found it in the uh, Tannic 40 made by, made by Mountain Smith. I got this the other day, and I was so excited about it. I thought, finally, all the terrible things about this backpack I can get rid of. Now, don't get me wrong, I've held on to it, and it's, it's held up for a number of years. It's not a terrible backpack, but there are, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit on this pack uh, that could be redesigned and improved. So I was very excited when this one came. The Tannic 40 by Mountain Smith. Um, I was so excited. And what we're doing now is a reboxing. This is not a, an unboxing, but this is a reboxing because I am returning this pack for a number of reasons. I want to share them with you about why this pack is completely inappropriate to my needs. Now, that's not to say that this is a bad backpack. I, I don't want to be trashing this backpack because there are a lot of great things about it. One of them is the quality of materials and the quality of workmanship uh, in putting those materials together. The stitching is really great. Uh, the, the fabric seems really strong. Uh, this is a much stronger side panel. I mentioned that on this one, it's got that, that uh, flimsy kind of netting uh, that's always getting torn. This one has much better material on one side, but on the other side, it has that flimsy stuff that's, that's always getting torn when you actually take it out and use it somewhere. Um, but it's very well made. It's a very well made pack. Everything seems pretty rugged on it. And for what they were trying to create, they did a very good job of it. And this pack may work great for some people. But what it does not work for, for me, from my perspective, is as an EDC sort of bug out kind of pack, or like kind of a get home bag, really, is more what, I, what I'm looking at it uh, for. 
And I'll, t I'll tell you why. Uh, there were a couple of things that hit me right off the bat when I, I, I took this out of the bag. And I was so excited. I was so excited to get a new bag. The first one is this, this top flap. Uh, when you, this top flap prevents you from getting into all the insides here. So in order to get into your bag, you have to, you have to take this top flap out. Now the top flap itself, it's just kind of clipped on here. So when you, you open it up, it kind of hangs there, and it's a great opportunity for stuff to start getting tangled. Now that's a small thing. That didn't really bother me when I saw that. I'm like, eh, okay, well, whatevs. Uh, it wasn't until I really got in here that I decided that this was not a pack for me. And here's the, here's the first big issue with it, is that this, this top flap that covers up, I'm going to get my old pack, my current pack, out of the way. Uh, this top flap uh, protects this large cavity here with, a, with an opening. And I forget how this one opens. How did this one open? Oh yeah, you just kind of pull it. And here's the opening into the, the inner cavity in there. Now, uh, there's a drawstring here. And then that kind of secures it. And then there's this flap. But aside from that, any kind of debris and junk can get in here. And granted, there is a drawstring here. But if this thing piles up with pine needles and whatever else kind of gets in there, once you're opening this up, the pine needles are sort of falling everywhere. If you don't perfectly close up this hole, it acts as a funnel and it'll bring everything down right into the pack. Um, I didn't think that was really cool. I, I like the way the zippers work because they close something and secure it. Now I know I complained about some of the zippers on this pack jamming here and there and this one had such weak teeth that it, it uh, I can't even really run the zipper across, but the idea, the concept of a zipper, I think is a sound one, and I don't like it when people feel the need to go and re-engineer something just for the purpose of re-engineering it. Uh, zippers are great. I think they work very well on backpacks, and this one has its main cavity not completely secured from the outside environment. Uh, things can fall in there. This panel here, this isn't bad. Now the reason I bought this pack was that it was very well reviewed by cinematographers. I'm a cinematographer, that means somebody that goes around with a camera, oftentimes out into the wilderness, and needs to record things. Cinematographers like to keep their equipment uh, clean, and they like to keep it in the bag, because uh, everything is very expensive. You lose one thing, and aside from the fact that it is pricey, you could also destroy your entire shoot schedule, because you don't tend to bring redundancy when you go shooting because everything's expensive and it's heavy on your back and everything. So you have one of everything, pretty much one camera, you know, one 50 millimeter lens. You want to keep everything. You don't want to be losing things. So these panels here are kind of nice. They look like they're sort of watertight. I haven't tested that or anything, but they're secure and you can zip things up in them. So you can put sensitive things that you don't want to lose or get dirty in this, in this top panel, which flings around and bangs every single time that you open up the pack. So if you put anything in here that you want to protect, which is what you would put in here, you're putting it on the, the door of your backpack, which makes no sense to me at all. It's a nice secure place, but not for particularly important things that you don't want to have being banged around every time you open the pack. Next on, on my list here is how do you secure this thing? Well, for the longest time, people have been using these little plastic buckles. They work great. They're all over the bag, but not on the primary flap that you're opening and closing. They have a, a hook. What, what is this the middle ages? Are we gonna have like shoelaces <laughs> to tie our pack? A hook? And, and, and you're putting it on something that's containing things that you want to protect and then it kind of, it, I mean, hooks kind of open up. Do I have to, t if I were to use this pack, would I need to, Place it down, look, it's already falling off. I hooked it, and the hook is already start, starting to, to decouple from the top there. I mean, who came up with this? I, I, the first thing that I saw when I was doing this was that, and I'm like, man, well, I'm gonna have to sew a new buckle on there so I can actually secure this because it's important to secure this because you don't want it coming off because then that'll let dirt and crap into your backpack. Terrible. Terrible. That is, a, that is a bad design feature. Now, maybe there are benefits of having a hook instead of some kind of a, like an actually closing plastic buckle. I don't know. They're lost on me. I'm not sure what they are. When we do get it open, there are some nice 
storage compartments in here. And these are, look like they're pretty secure, look like they're kind of watertight or at least water uh, resistant. And the zippers open up and tuck over into the side here. And that is, that's not bad. Uh, again, it's, it's a panel that's kind of flipping open whenever you're going to use it, but it is, it's not the primary thing that you're going to be flipping open all the time. So, you know, I can kind of accept that. Uh, these are okay storage compartments here. The main body, okay, it's all right. It has this one little pocket thing up at the top here that you can see, which is nice for small things, except that it's attached to the rest of the backpack with snaps. Now, they work all right today. They work all right today. But if I use this for a year, are those snaps really going to be working, or am I going to be having to try to find a way of kind of MacGyvering this thing back onto the pack, or is it just going to sit down at the bottom because the snap stopped working? I think that's a dreadful idea. When you get into the pack, also the, the top section of the pack that you open up, it kind of just dangles in here. And I, again, if that was the only problem, I would not be returning this pack, but it's just kind of weird and silly. It's like, well, here's the funnel where all the pine needles come out and fall into your, into your backpack. But as the main cavity goes, you know, I give it a, a C or a C plus. I mean, it's all right. Not a, not a big deal. I'm going to close this up and we're going to step right to the, the coup de gras of why I decided this pack was not for me. Now, this is the most accessible pocket, the back pocket right here. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's no zipper uh, access on the top here. Actually, there, you know, there is a little zipper access. Actually, this was not a bad extra little thing. There's a little, little zipper access so you can put some extra things in there that you really care about and you don't want to lose but that they, uh, you, you don't mind them flying around every time you open the bag and bang on everything. And they even included a lens cloth, if you're a photographer. So all the lenses that you've been banging around in, inside of this thing and getting covered in pine needles, you can clean the lenses off with a lens cloth. <laughs> so, but again, this one has a zipper, you know? Okay, cool, whatever. Here's the most accessible pocket, secured only by Velcro. And look what's in here. I mean, you could say, oh, well, you know, you're supposed to put large things in here. No. There's all these pockets for pens or notebooks or money or your wallet, a passport. That's, that's where you put all the important little things that you walk around with. In here, secured only by these two little pieces of, two tiny little pieces of Velcro right on the side there. So when you put this pack down, you got to squarely put it down, straight up and down, make sure that it never falls on the side and nothing ever slips out of this gaping hole right down here. I don't know, what's wrong with the zipper? Now they've got, they've got some buckles on the back here attached to hooks. I don't know why they're addicted to hooks here. I mean, you know, I'm not going to criticize them any further than that. Now, there, there are some other good things about it. It has a nice rigid bottom, which I guess, especially for camera people, um, you know, is kind of nice because it sort of protects the, the bottom form. So you could put a camera down there. That would be pretty safe. There's a little place for a rain fly under there uh, in, in this zipper pocket. And there's a place for storing something underneath that you don't care too much about putting the pack on top of, although it would have to be something flat because if you put anything under there and it makes your pack roll in any direction. Everything's going to dump out of the rest of the pack. Um, I, I don't know what I would really put under there. I mean, it's the kind of thing where you would put like a, maybe put a coat under there or something, but because you, know, you can kind of just shove it under there and that would be reasonably secure. But then you're putting your, your bag on top of the coat. I don't know. I was just really disappointed with this bag. Again, great workmanship, great materials, generally, but the thought process that went into it you know, and maybe it's good for some people, but not for me, not for a bug out bag, and not even really for a camera bag, which is part of what it was advertised for. I mean, they have a piece of lens tissue, a lens cloth in there. I mean, it's got molly strips on the side, and that's good, but just the, the way it's, it's put together, um, it, really, it really pushed me to decide I just need to bring this back, because this is worse than what I've got, and I'm not really all that enamored with what I have at the moment. So, Tannic 40 backpack, very well built backpack, very poorly designed though, in my opinion. And again, maybe it's good for some things, but definitely not for uh, a bug out bag where you have lots of little things you want to keep in there. 
uh, that you don't want to have falling out of holes, and not for, you know, for all the camera enthusiasts watching this, I don't think it's a very good bag for photo professionals either. I don't really know who it was designed for, but it's not me, so I'm returning it. So that's it, Tannic 40 backpack, good materials, I don't think very well thought out in putting it together. What are your thoughts on this? Are you happy with your everyday carry bag? What do you use for an everyday carry bag? I know that mine, it's a little on the big side, but I like that for a couple reasons. One is that this isn't just my EDC bag. This is also my, my dad bag. So if I need to put snacks and things for River in here, I can put them up there, or like an extra coat and stuff. So in this bag, if I can open it up without jamming the zipper, it always jams, always jams. Let's pull that out of there. Okay. In this, in the cavity of the bag, I don't have much of anything. This is pretty much just all open. Uh, got a solar panel in there. That's it. Let's start open up. So this is mostly a a dad bag that I also have EDC stuff attached to, and um, I kind of like the extra the extra weight of it too, because when I'm hiking, it's good exercise to to throw. What is that? How many pounds is that? 20, 30 pounds, something like that. It's nice to have that extra weight on your back. It gives you more exercise. So I don't mind having the, the, the extra mass and the extra size of it because it lets me throw in you know, dad's stuff and it gives me some extra, extra exercise. Um, but what do you use for your uh, EDC bag? Uh, do you have a larger pack like this? Do you do something smaller? Uh, do you do EDC like the real microwave, like in the, uh, the little tin can uh, or just in your wallet, like that, that, that type of thing. How do you approach this and what do you look for when you are designing your, your EDC bag? Uh, what are the attributes of a good bag in your opinion? I've shared some of mine with you. Let me hear some of yours. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.